Hi, my name is Evan. This is my Programming PLCs with Structured Text video series. Uh, this is a series I've been wanting to do for quite some time based on purely the number of people on Reddit and on some other forums that um, really just say they want to learn structured text and there's there's not a whole lot of uh, information out there about it. There's a little bit here and there for some of the other PLC programming, but what I found is a lot of people want to learn it and they do, maybe don't learn it in college or um, just they aren't taught tar structured text. It's mostly ladder diagrams and stuff. So um, this will be my attempt to uh, do a tutorial series on structured text. So the rest of this video I'm going to talk about IEC 61131-3 programming standards. Um, it'll be brief, uh, but if you want to jump ahead, uh, episode 2 is going to be setting up the PLC coding environment. So uh, a lot of people ask me what sort of PLC or what hardware to buy to get into PLCs and to learn how to program so that they can enter the automation or process control industries. Uh, and my answer is don't buy anything. Uh, download and install TwinCat 3 and run it local on your machine with simulated stuff. And uh, I'll show you how to do that in the next video. So um, video 3 is probably where I'm going to start putting code in. So if you want, jump to that as well. Uh, what is IEC 61131-3? So basically, that is an international standard for PLC programming. Uh, that's the short short version of it. Part 3 specifically is programming languages. Um, what they did basically was lay out all these different ways that people were putting programs into PLCs, and they standardized it. So now any vendor that claims they can support IEC 61131-3 uh, is going to have to adhere to these different languages. So as a programmer, as somebody trying to get into the industry, it's awesome because you can learn these six languages. And once you say you know IEC 61131-3, uh, you basically know Siemens, you know Rockwell, you know Beckoff, you know um, any of the other vendors that are out there, So um, provided they uh, support this standard. So course there's more to learn for each vendor but in general you're going to be able to pick them up quick if you know it because they all sort of match uh, programming languages so I'm on the Wikipedia page here which is always a good place to start learning about this sort of stuff but uh, this page is a little sparse so I'm going to dig deeper into structured text but I want to go over some of the other languages just to explain sort of what they are and wh where they fit in and why I don't particularly care for them basically so uh, the first one is ladder diagrams. Uh, this is going to probably be the most common. It's got the strongest foothold in the industry from my experience. A lot of the Rockwell programmers, some especially the old school people, really love this stuff. I, I think it came from the old days of using uh, relay diagrams or relay schematics. So you've got basically on the left side, here's where your power power quote unquote comes from the right side would be your output so any inputs along this way these would be switches or some other sort of digital input here so if they're in series that's an and once they branch out that's an or and eventually they make it to the output side of the rung and on the output side of the rung they're going to uh, power up the outputs here so this would be a contact for the motor um, basically a relay coil that would power the motor in this case so uh, the things I don't like about this, actually it's very widely used, so it's worth knowing uh, for sure, but what I don't like about it is how much clicking you do to, to input it and just how messy some complicated rungs get. So I don't care for it. There's ways to work around that and there's, there's cool stuff you can do with it, but um, I primarily use structured text and I'm going to continue that way. So uh, The next one, functional block diagram. So functional block diagram, um, each one of these blocks dropped in here is an is a is a function with inputs on the left side and outputs on the right side typically so on this one it's saying if status is some variable equals one then turn on green so once these are both true green comes on so this is a, looks like a traffic signal um, I don't care for that so much the editors are usually kind of clunky and you end up with this really long list of things that's kind of hard to look through if you're just trying to find out what you want um, so structured text, we're going to talk plenty about that, so I'm going to kind of leave, I'm going to skip that one for now. Uh, instruction list. So instruction list is basically the closest thing to a microcontroller or processor's assembly language that, that we get to in PLC, and honestly I don't use it. It's a little bit more time consuming um, and a little bit more cryptic. I'm sure there's great reasons to use it, but uh, I've yet to find one, so. Anyway, I'll pretty much
or skip that. I want to say that all of the uh, other languages compiled down to this just prior to uh, getting put onto the actual into the process image to get executed by the processor. So uh, it is important to, to understand it, but I I've, I've really don't use it. So sequential function chart. So this one is sort of a flow chart. Uh, it's kind of nice because you can get a sort of quick overview of the way a process is working and you can usually if you're online with the PLC you can see uh, what part of the process is running. I think it has a lot of merit but the editors are, from my experience been pretty poor and uh, you've got to open up each one of these blocks would contain another unit of code so they're just a little container of code and so that might be structured text or that might be um, ladder logic or any any of the other languages basically but I've found that you end up with a whole bunch of sub windows and they're just a nightmare to deal with so I try not to uh, use this very often because it's a little bit annoying but anyway it's perfectly perfectly well suited for what it's made for so a uh, continuous function chart would be the last one it's basically a function block diagram only you put a bunch of them all together and you connect them with these little wires so it's basically um, sort of like LabVIEW if you're familiar at all with LabVIEW but um, you know the output of this gets fed right into the input of this so here they're grabbing the length of a string and subtracting one I think and then grabbing the right of the string and concatenating it and do so this whole thing produces code but uh, I don't care for this graphical stuff so much because I can do that in like two lines of code or one long line of code in structured text so uh, anyway, I think that's a, a really very, very quick overview of IEC 61131-3 programming types. There are some data types associated with it um, and, and some other stuff, but uh, I'll get into that in more detail. All of it is uh, spans all these languages, so we'll talk about that in context of structured text coming up on the, in the next few episodes. So uh, stick with me. We'll set up the environment on the next episode. After that, we will uh, start putting some code in. And uh, make sure you subscribe to this and uh, watch the playlist view. I'll try to put my uh, down below in my description. I'll put a link to the next video uh, so that you don't have to go searching for it. So keep an eye out for that. Grab the playlist, like, and subscribe if you enjoy this series so I know uh, where to spend my time in the future. Thanks.